Hi, Sophie friends, Kendra here, and oh, <laughs> I have my new mole. It's the original Hops Black Box. Um, this was some of the very, very first ones he made. Um, last video, I showed you the mini molds he made for me. Let me grab one of those. This one is a custom mold, small. It's just a box with a insulating lid, exactly what I need for my purposes. Now, these are black, unlike other wooden molds that we've seen. Um, I did help him test this varnish. It is fully lye safe, soap safe. Um, I spilled lye on it. I let soap batter sit on it for days and washed it and it's perfect it's great it's awesome so they're pretty aren't they i love that aspect of them how pretty they look and hopefully these are going to retain their beautiful black loveliness um, no matter how much soap and oil stains we get on them <laughs> sit that one aside now the five pound mold though i'm so excited to use this okay here we go this is what makes this so special. There's a couple things. One, when you open it up, check out what's inside. I gotta dump them out in order to get to them. Yep, he filled it full of soap dishes for us. So why bother shipping dead weight, right? Or empty space? So I have 12 of his fabulous boardwalk soap dishes to go along with my mold. Raw. Set those aside. Now this is a silicone liner. We all know what silicone liners are. Yeah, it's great, but check this out. On the bottom of the mold, thumb holes, ear holes, so we can push the soap out. They're kind of hard to get out when there's no soap in it, but we will fix that shortly. So it has this great, real thick and sturdy soap liner. Um, I don't have the dimensions off the top of my head right now. I did enter them into um, I use Soap Maker Pro to calculate my recipe. So I entered it all in and made uh, a custom mold in the program to measure it. But he gives you the dimensions of the mold from wood to wood, as well as from silicone liner to silicone liner. So you have everything you need there in order to figure out how big your mold is. All right. Now, if you look closely, you see how the silicone is taller than the height of the, this is the wood, but this is the silicone. And that's something new and different for us as well. We're not used to that. We're used to the wood coming all the way up to the edge of the silicone. There's a reason why that he didn't do that. It's a really cool reason. It's because of his really cool, awesome lids. Look, my soapy friends, it's a tall lid. Do you know what that means? Tops, oh my gosh. When this is like gonna be the best insulating mold ever because the lid is going to fit right over the silicone insert won't damage our tops and everything can gel nicely. I'm so super excited about these. These are gonna be great. Okay, so um, I, I think that's everything I wanted to talk about how much, how awesome this mold, other than I'm gonna hug my mold. Is that silly that I'm hugging my mold? I really, really like this mold. Oh my goodness, okay. All right, I will put this beauty right here, lid off, set aside and what we're going to do is we're going to make some soap. Um, it is not a fancy soap. It is an uncolored soap. It is a custom order that um, she's actually a friend of mine and she also needed some soap. I love how friends become soapy friends. And we have the oils here. I pre-measured everything. I've never made soap live so I'm a little bit nervous something bad's gonna happen something's gonna go wrong because you know you're making soap so something usually happens 
Um, but I already have my oil set up. It is my base blend of coconut oil, sunflower seed oil, olive oil, which I think works great for natural colorants. It also sets up rather quickly and I can do a lot with it as far as um, based on how much water I use will allow me to gel versus not gel and the strength of the recipe also like the hardness the way the bar sets up allows me to if I want I can pour soap in the morning and then cut it in the afternoon which I freaking love um, so I've already pre-measured everything so this is my base blend of oils but customized for her with the addition of cocoa butter I have also added hi Erica hi Jennifer I have also added to this um, some cocoa butter. So I already measured everything. I already melted it all down. Um, well, I melted down the cocoa butter and then mixed that to my room temp oils. Um, I usually do hot uh, or the heat transfer with my, um, with my lye. Well, usually it's what I've been doing lately. So my lye is sitting over there away from everything and oh, trying to make sure I'm in frame. <laughs> <laughs> and why is sitting over there out of the way so they don't spill it while I was giggling and hugging the mold. Uh, so we'll be adding the lye water to this. And also in here is the essential oils. So I was really excited to get this request because I had not made an uncolored soap with a bunch of orange essential oil in it. And I'm thinking eight years or so. And you know, it's always good to remember and give yourself a little reminder about what how things are going to affect the color of your soap. So let me show you what I mean. Essential oils, when we add them, and I've already added them to there, I've added two essential oils to our recipe. Let me pop this open. This is peppermint essential oil. Okay. Can you see it dripping? I don't know if you can, it's clear. Can you even see it in the test tube, pipette? I don't think you can, it's clear. It's like there's nothing in there. You'll have to pardon me as I get used to where the camera is because I flipped the um, image so I'm not mirrored, but now I'm kind of mirrored to me so I'm trying to figure out where I'm holding my hand up. Okay. So that's the peppermint, nice and clear. Let me put this lid back on so I don't lose it. <clears throat> this is kind of fun. I hope um, if anyone's saying anything, if I miss your comments, say it again. Okay. This clean pipette is the orange. I need you to hold it up. Look. It's, it's orange. This is orange essential oil, orange, um, folded orange. What is this? Five, 10. Oh my gosh. It smells so good. Uh, it's the orange five fold. Even the, the little plug gets stained with it. So that this is technically a soap colorant, but you know what I say, everything's a colorant for your soap. Everything you add is going to change the color of your soap, um, which is why we do all these tests and need to make swatches and sample bars for ourselves so we know what colors we're blending where. All right, so wonderful, awesome, amazing new soap mold. Let's give this puppy a run. I'm really excited about gelling the soap by just putting a lid on it. Um, over here, here I'm gonna move the camera. See if you can see over here, you see right here, that's a small batch I did today and it's gelling, but I have to wrap it in a heating pad. It's got a little gel ring going on though. Okay, so I'm not gonna have to do that with this new mold because of the lid. And I do think, let me turn you a bit more so you can see me. I do think that the um, the, the lacquer that he put on this is going to help with our insulation needs as well. 
I promise I'll get the hang of this so I'm not interrupting our souping sessions with uh, camera adjustments all the time. All right, so you're ready? We're gonna make some soap. I've got everything all measured out. It should be a matter of a minute or two of stick blender noise and then filling up our mold. Um, I'm not real super big on tops, but if we get a thick enough um, trace, I'll try. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Um, not like Julie with her like amazing ribbon swirl tops, but so we'll, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> All right, grabbing the lie. Now I'm assuming everyone knows this, um, except for I think Chris is with us. Chris, this is the sodium hydroxide. When I say lie, I mean the solution of water and sodium hydroxide. Uh, Chris, if you are with us, also drop in a comment for where people can grab the molds. And when, if you do end up purchasing one of these molds, my dear Sophie friends, tell Chris that you're a member of this group, tell him I say hi, and the reason being is because he will send you some extra treats. All right. Here we go, let's make some soap. I'm not expecting to see any magical color changes from adding the sodium hydroxide lye solution to the oils. It's not like we're doing rhubarb or alkanet or yellow dock that has all that wonderful soapy magic happening. Um, by the pH changing and revealing new colors. We're actually kind of hoping we don't get much of a color change. I really have no idea. I didn't take the temperature of the lye water before I added it. I really haven't taken temperatures on soap. Um, I don't know, when I first started, I was like thermometer this, thermometer that, everything temperature. Then I, um, broke, finally broke yet another um, thermometer and I said that's it, I'm just gonna get an infrared gun so I can look, so I can just zap, you know, what, what temperature are you? Here, I'll grab it. You know, one of these gizmos, which is really cool. I guess we'll check. It's at 93. That'll heat up as things get going. Um, but as soon as I got this, I pretty much stopped using or taking temperature, so <laughs> that was kind of funny. So no, you don't need to. I just um, heat my oils at room temperature and know that if I'm adding hot light, it'll be okay. Maybe don't melt the coconut oil if you're adding extra coconut oil because it'll melt itself. And if I'm, if I had let the lye solution sit and cool for a bit, realize it might take a little longer to get to trace, and that's been sitting for maybe 20 minutes. Um, okay, so now it's going to get noisy, everyone. Stick blender time. Oh my gosh, it smells so good because it's cocoa butter and oranges. Uh, I need some chocolate covered oranges now. Wow, this is delicious. Here's a question for you. Is your, do you guys have colored stick blenders? Um, I always think it's fun to get the colored ones, but then every time I make soap, I'm really wishing I didn't have a colored stick blender because the when the, the light shines in, all my soap batter looks green because my stick blender and my spatulas are all green, but it's just the light reflecting into the batter. <laughs>
definitely at emulsion and I could, you know, so just kind of general soapy knowledge here. If I wanted to make this go faster, um, I could apply heat. So a lot of times I will use, um, let me grab, I used this earlier for that little um, baby batch there, about two um, and a half pound batch. And this is great because it sits right on top of my hot plate and I can add heat as I want. So I can melt oils, everything. So it's a stainless steel pitcher. These are great. So if I was using a stainless steel pitcher, which this batch would not fit in here, I could add some more heat and say, oh, I want this to, you know, I want to make science happen faster and add some heat. If I wanted to, I've done that before. Um, sometimes I'll do that on larger batches if I need to just get things going. Sometimes they take a little longer. Um, right now I am starting to see, it's not really like false trace because, um, well, I know it's not, I know it's not trace. You know, I'm just, I'm just before emulsion. So not quite emulsion. There's still a little bit of oil at the top. Um, but it's definitely getting thick. So I'm going to give that another blitz. Um, I guess we talked, so as I was saying, if I was using this, I wanted to add more heat. I could add heat, make this whole thing happen faster. Um, another thing you can do is what we're doing now is stirring and stick lighting. And a, the third thing you can do, which is actually my favorite, is you can just wait. Just do nothing. Um, during that do nothing time, that is typically when I would be doing the dishes. So I'd wash out my, um, my lye container and the lye spatula, if I had any other little paraphernalia around, you know, like for mixing colors or anything else, I'd be washing them all right now. I mean, there's no reason to sit here with your stick blender and um, stirring once, once things have started. But I did all that in preparation for the lye so I wouldn't be distracted. So we'll go ahead and just stick on this another minute or two. Um, if I wanted to pour, I could pour right now. It's just past emulsion, but as I said, let's see if we can um, get this thick enough to do a little, some sort of um, piled up top. get a piled up top if you get another minute or two so if you, some of you guys want to start chatting and let me uh, have something to say otherwise I'm going to be standing here just stirring 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 <laughs> tell you I was really nervous something was gonna go wrong otherwise it would have had hotter oils and everything but this is going just swimmingly uh, with the exception of the potentially going wrong, is that it's not quite hot enough to make a real fancy um, piled up top, unless we wanna just stand here and stir and stir and stir and stir and stir together. <laughs> Maybe we will, I don't know, we'll see how we feel.
And I do believe it's time to get the new stick blender to set this one aside as the backup, um, which usually happens when I start getting air bubbles in them. With no matter how much burping you do, you always get more, burp, more air, more air bubbles in your batter. I think most of you probably realize by now that I don't, I'm not offended by air bubbles. I mean, it's just part of what happens. You've, you've seen most of my soaps have air bubbles in it. Um, you can plane them off. You can do all sorts of tricks to keep them from happening. I kind of just, yeah, whatever. It's soap. Sometimes I'll have air bubbles in it. But, you know, when it gets a little bit crazy, like some of these I can really see. And can you hear? Here, let me move that away. Can you hear it? Can you hear it knocking around in there? Just the, the, the shaft, it's, it's just not sitting as well as it should be anymore. Um, it still works fine, it's still blending things. It's still fully functional, it doesn't overheat. What type is this? This is a KitchenAid one. I've had this for, what, five years? I'm gonna get this in the box. I've had this one for five years and um, if I remember correctly I got this on sale I believe KitchenAid has Black Friday sales and they will do 50 or 60 percent off and so I think I got two of them at that time or something along those so very inexpensive purchase and for a tool I use all the time and it lasts in five years, I was pretty happy with it. Um, but I can definitely see bubbles happening over here. Um, I think you can see without me actually pouring it out. So, you know, we're, we're not anywhere near being ready to do fancy swirly tops. So we have two options. I can keep stick blending or we can wait. I could pour it into the mold and then wait and then swirl the top. So what, what do you think I should do? Should I keep stick blending? Come on, someone's gotta have an opinion. Do you want more stick blending or should we just go ahead and pour it in the mold and I'll come back and do a swirly top later? I know what we can do. We can do some coloring with a natto. It is a custom order, but it is for a friend and she would let me do that. So I don't think we should um, break in a new mold without any little designy thing on it. So I'm gonna grab some Anato and we'll do a quick um, oil, um, oil top on it. That'll be fine. Okay, so we're gonna call that blended. Okay, like, I'm gonna do a little more. <laughs> We're still gonna do the Anata oil top on this. Oh, and 
I can show you my, my infusion jars too. Let me grab them. All right, so I'm gonna grab two so you can laugh with me. <laughs> All right, for those of you at the book, you know I use these labels on my jars and I usually just put a rubber band around them and update them as I go. I am going to, I've got a big surprise for you. It should be ready next week and you'll be able to download and print these off so you can use them too. This is Indigo, by the way. Okay, this is my Anato. Are you wondering where the label is? <laughs> Apparently I spilt, it's covered in oil. Look, it'll even just kind of stick to the jar itself. It's covered in oil, I <laughs> need to remake it. Um, I was using this earlier today and I made a big old freaking mess with it. So there's my oily Anato label. Um, I can tell that um, a month ago, I added some more annatto, or some, I topped off the oil in this. And I knew that just by looking at the label. Those are in the book as well. Oh, let me grab another pipette too, because we'll want a clean one. Those had essential oil in them. All right. So we'll just do a little swirly top, a little oil swirl on the top of these. Okay, one more spray. Let's. But you can probably tell, you know, one, one nice thing about my recipe is how how much time you have to work with things. I mean, you've been sitting here, and that was a lot of stick blending, you got to admit. Um, and it is still, I mean, yeah, this, this we really should have, we, I should have heated this up if I wanted to do um, a little fancy top piling it up there. But guess what? That just means we have an excuse to make even more soap. So we'll have to do a second bar of soap in our snazzy new mold. Yay! All right. So I'm going to go ahead. See, this is still, I'll pour a little higher up so you can see. I mean, it's still incredibly thin. It is, um, it is, it did trace, for sure traced. You see all those air bubbles? I don't know if you can see them or not. Oh, look at that. Filling it up perfectly. Even a smidge left over. See, maybe I will let that sit around and um, do a little uh, pipe down the middle of it or something. Yeah, we'll have a little bit of fun with that. Maybe, we'll see. I'm not promising anything, who knows? All right, so this is how you do oil tops. Can you, I'm gonna tilt you down. Let me get this out of the way so I don't spill. Well, I guess I don't need to tilt you down. I can move the mold a little closer. No, I'm gonna tip you down. I want you to see what I'm doing. Oh, there, that's better. Okay, you don't need to see me, you see, so look here. Okay, so what I wanna do is I'm going to just put some annatto infused oil on the top and use that to add a little bit of color to the mold. I mean, the indigo is sitting here too. Maybe we should do the indigo as well. Okay. So, I mean, you don't want to do oodles and oodles and oodles because, um, you are adding more oil, but I mean, 
not adding that much more oil to it. So maybe instead of, I think this one's formulated at a 6% super fat, maybe by the time we're done, it'll be at six and a quarter percent super fat. You know, not, not a big difference there. Um, let's do the indigo too. The indigo infusion is um, pretty young. And this one was recently topped off, so we should get some really pretty um, we should get some really, really pretty pastels out of it. And I think Lori would love that. That you will also be able to see this con this um, the indigo contrast better. There, can you see? I'm just putting drops. Just kind of wherever, whatever. Do, 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 do. And it's not going in, it's just dropping on top. Okay. So this indigo infusion um, is exactly one month old. I do believe I also, I know I'm walking behind you off camera, how rude of me. Um, I also have a rhubarb infusion going. You can see it has a ways to go still, at least I think. Um, so let's see if we can pop this one open. <clears throat> it's been closed and shooken up. Sometimes some of the oil gets up in there. And remember, I use those stainless steel lids on there so they don't rust. So this one, you can't, it doesn't look like it, but this should come out with some pinks. So let's put some pinks on there. So we got some blues, some oranges, some yellows, some pinks. Now we won't see the pinks until tomorrow. Well, you might start seeing some of it show up here. I'm really not sure why I did with that because it's almost the same color as the batter. So that's just what happened with that. <clears throat> um, but the pink from rhubarb is going to, um, the rhubarb turns pink based on the, the, the pH. So the oil looks murky, but it makes pink soap. All right, so I am going to, I'm just gonna use my pipette here and I'm just going to swirl away. This is fun, you know, I usually do my half round molds, um, uh, half round soaps, so they're in um, pipes, so I don't usually get to do tops, which is um, one reason why I'm not very good at them, because I don't do them very often. All right, so I'm gonna bring you a smidge closer, or at least try to. Yay, we have a pretty soap top. Oh my goodness. Chris, I love the mold. Absolutely love it. I mean, I'll be able to say more tomorrow when we go to unmold this. I will go live tomorrow to unmold, but for now, okay, I think this, yeah, okay. I might have to do a little bit of practice putting the lid on and off to make sure I don't smush. But I mean, look how tall this lid is. Let me grab a ruler. The lid, the amount of space you get, you can do, dear soapy friends, you could do about an inch and a half tall fancy pipe top in here and still put the lid on. <laughs> That's freaking awesome. Oh my goodness. 
Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Well, I hope you all enjoyed making soap with me. Thank you so much for breaking in my new mold. I will pop back in with a live video tomorrow for unmolding the soap. So remember we got those great um, mold release holes on the bottom. It really should release quite well. I am not going to insulate this. I am going to leave this right here, just like this. Right above me is my mini split and these are stainless steel tabletops. So it's cool right here. It's not frigid, but it's not the warm end of the room. So I am putting this to, to bed right now. It is to bed. I will not touch it and we will see if the entire soap gels. I'm guessing, oh heck yeah, it's gonna gel. But we shall see. And if it doesn't, I'll show you how to fix that too. All right, bye soapy friends. Hope you all have a great weekend. Talk to you tomorrow.